Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Light for Life Ministries. We pray that God will bless you during this time of worship. We just invite you to prepare your hearts to receive what God has for us tonight. God bless you. Open your heart to Him as we sing this little song out of John chapter 14. And uh, the words are on the screen, so sing along with us as we share tonight. Praise God. God is good.
love that little song because it really tells the truth of what's going to happen to us if we believe when we die. What's going to happen on the other side? And we'll live with Jesus forever and ever. And we'll be worshiping forever and ever in his presence, covered in his blood, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless, the songwriter said, to stand before the throne. What a great day that will be. Lord, we thank you for this evening. We pray that you would bless and touch each person here tonight. Make this a, a fruitful time for them. Lord, just help, Lord, that everything that is said and done will be to your praise and glory and be done in a way that really magnifies you.
He's our power, our strength, the might that we need in every situation, and he never leaves us nor forsakes us. Praise God. He is, sorry, I got a little buzz back there. I had to get rid of, not a buzzer, but a buzz. <laughs> Amen. Well, we're going to look in the Word tonight, and I've got a, just a really great message to share with you as we begin looking at the Christmas season. And I believe it's going to be a, a, a real encouragement to you and a blessing to you as we look at this message tonight. But before we go into the message, I want to take just a moment and, and, uh, and have a word of prayer with us. And I, I first of all want to give a little report. We've been praying for a, a, a wonderful sister in the Lord named Donna, who lives over in uh, Du Bois, Pennsylvania. She's a part of Smithtown Community Church, and there Donna, uh, who works in the church and is a faithful, faithful sister in the Lord, uh, was having trouble with her heart, went through open heart surgery this week, and then had a hard time kind of snapping out of it. So we've been praying for her, but I got word from uh, Pastor today, Pastor Roland, that she's beginning to come around and acknowledge things going the right direction and it's just they're saying just now she needs to get to the point that they can take her off of the ventilator so she can breathe on her own so i'm going to ask you just to be praying with us for that our son rob is fighting melanoma would you be praying with us that the lord will continue the lord's been healing him there's been two big tumors that actually totally shrunk up and uh, but there's a third one that that he's dealing with and, uh, and so they're continuing treatment there. So would you pray for him that the Lord would just totally heal him and eradicate all this cancer out of his body? My younger sister, Anita, asks that we pray for her. She's been sick. She's a school teacher and she catches all these things from her students and, and she asks that we be praying for her. So would you remember Anita in prayer? And then uh, my cousin, Don Buzzard, a wonderful Christian, uh, a man who uh, loved the Lord with all of his heart, uh, it was half Miami Indian by, uh, by birth and, uh, and has, a, has had just a great testimony with all of that. School teacher influenced a lot of people. He went home to be with the Lord uh, just a couple weeks ago and uh, the family will be laying him to rest this coming week. So would you pray for him? We're, we're rejoicing that he's in the presence of the Lord. And, uh, and that's what we need to rejoice in. So let me just encourage you, just be in prayer with him and for him. And we'll give you, um, uh, or, or just thank you uh, from the bottom of our hearts that you do that. Praise the Lord. Uh, I know that, that there's more prayer requests, but uh, join us on Tuesday night when we try to get the complete list out, or you can look on our website and see what requests have been out there. But let's have, have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you. Lord, this is Thanksgiving weekend, and we want to say thank you. Thank you for all that you've done for us. Thank you for all that you are doing for us. Thank you that you are our great healer. Thank you, Lord, that you are our constant companion. Thank you, Lord, that even when things don't seem to be going right, we can know that you are on the throne and you're causing all things to work together for our good. And we just praise you for that tonight. And Lord, in all these circumstances, all these people that we've mentioned, we just want to thank you that you've heard our prayer and that you're working right now. You're sending forth your spirit. You're touching them. You are sending forth your word and you're touching them. Lord, we know whenever people came and asked you to heal them, you didn't refuse them, but you said, be it according to your faith. And as they or others expressed faith, you responded to that trust and that faith and you touched people. And we thank you for that. And Lord, we're just believing you to do that again tonight to make the difference in each and every one of these people in Jesus name thank you amen and amen and amen praise God am I forgetting anything Kathleen oh all right 
When Kathleen asked me, just put on your prayer list our little doggie. She'd been through surgery and is still recovering. So uh, uh, we would appreciate prayers for a little bit. That's her name, little bit. She's a good dog, and we love her, don't we? Okay, she's looking at me. She hears me talking about her. <laughs> Okay, if you have your Bible tonight, we're, I want to begin a series of Christmas messages. This is November the 30th, so it's technically not December yet, but I want to get started and for the next uh, four weeks here, be sharing on the topic of Christmas. You know, Christmas is a great time of year. It's a time that, that can bring out the best in people. It can bring out the worst in people, too. You know, it's, it's one of those times where you either love it or you hate it. You know, you're on one side of it or the other. Very, it's hard for people to be, you know, just indifferent about the whole thing. But, but you know, it, it's, it's a wonderful time because people that maybe wouldn't think about giving and doing good for others all year long, all of a sudden at Christmas time, they begin thinking about that. Because the theme of Christmas is really a theme about love, and about helping people. And that theme is portrayed in the reality that God who created us loves us and he so loved the world that he came to this earth to give us what we need that we couldn't get for ourselves. And that was that we could have eternal life through the sacrifice of his son, his perfect life. God would never expect us to sacrifice our children, but what he didn't expect us to do, he did for us. And he gave Jesus to be that sacrifice so that we could have eternal life. When he was born, we all know the scripture, the angels cried out in a chorus and they said, peace on earth, good will towards men, quoting the scripture. And that is really the theme of Christmas. You hear that over and over again. Peace on earth. War stop. Over, over and over again, war stop at Christmas time. They'll call a truce and there'll be a, at least a period of peace, maybe a day or two or a week or two. And, and, uh, and it, it is a time for being peaceful. It is a time for showing peace. It is a time for making peace. And so... I wanted to talk uh, tonight and, and begin tonight talking about steps that we can take to have peace. You know, people all over the world want peace. They say that 30% that, uh, of the Americans are, are on drugs due to depression because they don't have peace. They have to take some kind of drug to give them a feeling of security and peace. Um, and, and that's amazing when you consider that the United States is the richest and most blessed nation on earth. And yet we, we're blessed and rich, but we don't have peace because something's missing. There's some steps that we need to take in order to have peace. So this Christmas season is a season that reminds us that we can have peace. Peace with God, the Bible says, the peace of God, and we can have the God of peace with us. Now, I'll have my notes on the, on the website where you can pick them up. But I, I tried to be decorative. I did this for Kathleen because she loves Christmas trees. So I, I thought I'd be a little artistic with the words and make a Christmas tree for her. I hope you can appreciate that. Uh, but the Hebrew word is right here on the screen. And uh, I don't speak Hebrew, but in the transliteration, the word is shalom. And, uh, and we hear that often. We all understand that People that are of Mideastern descent often use the word shalom as a greeting, either a greeting hello or a greeting goodbye, you know. And they're saying some really fantastic things when they say that. 
The word shalom means to be safe. And, and is figuratively, it means to be well, be happy. Uh, it, it means a, a showing of friendliness. Um, it means in an abstract sense, welfare and health and prosperity. And then finally, we get to the word peace. But all of these things are contained in this idea of shalom. Prosperity, health, peace, let's be friends, happiness, uh, wellness, safety, all of this. And, uh, and it's used as a greeting, it's used among friends, it's used in a way to say, hey, I, I love you. It's good to see you, you know, I wish you well. I'm glad that you're, you're with me. And that God is using this word in the Bible. Now it has a Greek counterpart and I won't take the time to go into that, except to say that it means the same type of idea, uh, only it adding to it the idea of serenity, a feeling of serenity. Now peace, the word peace, is used 429 times in the Bible in 400 different verses. And defined in the Hebrew language, as we have said, happiness, wellness, prosperity. And again, I'll read some of these words. Peace, to prosper, to be safe, to salute, to have welfare, uh, to uh, be whole, and to be uh, wishing people peace and prosperity and safety. And so God uses this word over and over again in the Bible, 429 times towards us to say, this is what he wants for us. This is what he has for us. Don't make any mistake about it. Though the world doesn't have peace, it's not because God doesn't want us to have peace. God wants you to have peace. And contained in that peace is a sense of security and safety. Contained in that peace is prosperity and, and healing and health. Contained in that peace is all these things that we've talked about. The, the serenity, the feeling of a peace, God wants you to have that and wants me to have that. He wants every human being. So how can we get it? Well, there's, there are steps. It's like when you want to go up to the next level, how do you get to the next level? You know, unless you're Superman, you can just jump up there. What do you do? You take steps. You got to go one step after another. And as you climb those steps, you, you move into that place. And it's true of peace. Peace is, is, is something that we have to, have to go after. It's at a higher level. And, uh, and so there are things that we have to do. And the first step is a step called reception. So I put that on the, on the screen for you. And here's the scripture. And all the scriptures we have tonight are going to come out of Isaiah tonight and next week. And then we'll move to some other books as we talk about peace. Isaiah 9.6 says this. You'll remember this. Here's a great Christmas verse. We've got a whole musical that was built around this verse. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So here's the first thing that we have to do to have peace. We have to recognize that peace is a person. And that person is the child that was born unto us by promise, who is the Messiah, Jesus, the Christ. He is our peace. And, and if we're going to have that peace, we have to have him living in our house, living in our home. We have to let him 
be the, the prince of our hearts, the prince of our home, the prince of our life. Um, it's like receiving royalty. Now, can you imagine for a minute, Kathleen, if you were the queen of Sheba, and I know that's really putting you down because you are far above that, but if you were the queen of Sheba and you traveled across Europe to England to go and greet the Queen of England and, and you were standing outside the door and sent word to the Queen through some kind of ambassador messenger, the Queen of Sheba is here to see you. And the Queen inside said, oh, I'm too busy, I don't care about her, and left you standing outside. You know, she would be missing out on all the blessing that you had to bring. And, and, and while she's missing out on that, she would, she, she would not only be missing out for herself, she'd be hurting you, pushing you away. Now, that's the way it is with Jesus. He is the King of Kings. The government shall be upon his shoulders. And he says, here's his message in Revelation 3.20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Whosoever hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and sup with him and he with me. So this is the picture of a king going to another king's palace and going in, knocking on the door, making the announcement and the the other king opens the door to him, and they go in, and, wh and what, does, what would the king do? He'd, he'd say real quick to all the servants, get the best food out, get the royal silverware out, get, get all of the best, you know, bring out wonderful things, entertainment and everything, and he would entertain that king. And in the same way as we open our heart to Jesus, he comes in and all of a sudden, there's not just an awareness that Jesus uh, was alive or even is God, but there's more than that. We, be, we begin to have a real relationship with him, a personal relationship with the Prince of Peace. And everywhere he is, there's peace because he is peace. And wherever we're listening to him, wherever we're allowing him to take charge, of our lives and our heart, there's peace. Oh, Jesus is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I, lo I love that bumper sticker that says, no peace, just N-O, no peace, or, or no Jesus, just that word, N-O, no Jesus, then no So no, if you don't have any Jesus in your heart, you can't have any peace because he is the Prince of Peace. He's the key to it. But then the sticker goes on to say, no, Jesus, K-N-O-W, know him, have a personal relationship with him, start doing life with him, live with him, let him live in you, live with you, know Jesus, and then you will know peace, K-N-O-W. So the first step in, in having peace in our life is to receive Jesus. Think of King Herod. Here was a king on the throne in Jerusalem. And some other kings came to Herod and said, where is this new king of the Jews that's been born? For we, we become aware. And I, I'm not sure I understand all of that. They said they saw his star, and, and there's a lot of theories about how that worked out. I don't know that I understand all that, except to say th they, they wanted to see this newborn king. And Herod said to the scribes, tell me, where would this king be born? And they knew exactly what these guys were talking about. And they brought out the scriptures and said he's supposed to be born in Bethlehem. And yes, Herod, this is the time that, that Daniel prophesied that, the, that this new king would be born. 
And instead of Herod receiving him, what did Herod do? He said to these, these three kings from the east, he said, you go and worship him and then come back and tell me where, he, where you found him. And, uh, and they didn't come back because an angel warned them that Herod didn't have good intentions. So they went home another way. So Herod became so angry that he put out a death sentence on everybody in that Bethlehem area that was two years old and younger, according to the timetable these guys said. A king who wouldn't receive Jesus. Can you imagine? I, I keep, I'm, I'm always puzzled at how could anybody be alive at that time, see Jesus, have him hear, hear Jesus, have him touch you and not receive Jesus. And yet King Herod is an example of someone who didn't do it. And I want to encourage you, don't be King Herod. Don't be King Herod. But instead be Mother Mary, who was a, a, a virgin little teenage girl. And all of a sudden an angel visited her and said, the Lord is going to bless you and you'll be the mother, you'll become the mother of the Most High. And, and the Messiah's visit on earth. And, uh, and she said, how will this happen? He said, the Holy Spirit's gonna come on you and make you pregnant. Now, some people say, how can that happen? Well, the Bible says the Holy Spirit came on the earth and all the life that we have came from the Holy Spirit coming on the earth. That the Spirit hovered over the earth and, and the Lord spoke his word and life sprung forth. Now, if God could bring forth all that kind of life, why couldn't he put a new, new race of human beings in the womb of Mary, which is what he did. And, uh, and so he visited her. And even though she knew it would be, bring confusion and shame and, and all kinds of other problems, she yielded to Jesus and said, be it according to your word. And she received Jesus into her womb. Wow. Christmas tells us that story. And it's, it's saying something to us because we can receive Jesus. We can receive the King of Kings. So the first step is reception. Isaiah 9, 6, 7 says of his increase, the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. So his peace, including prosperity, wellness, um, uh, uh, all of these things that we quoted out of the definition just a moment ago, there will be no end to it. And upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform it. So think of this, you receive Jesus and he comes in, you let him take control of your heart and that becomes a forever relationship. You know, relationships in this world come and go. Even the ones that we have for a lifetime, at some point, someone dies and we lose a relationship. It's gone. And we have the memory, thank God for it, but the relationship is gone. And there's a hole left in our heart. There's a pain. But we can have a relationship with Jesus that never ends. And we can have peace from Jesus that never ends. No matter what's happening around us, we still have Jesus in our heart. You know, I'll never forget Kathleen. A few weeks ago when Helene, Hurricane Helene came through, and uh, the, the, is, though they tried with their best to scientifically predict the movement of the hurricane, they, they didn't get it quite right. They thought it was gonna move a little bit different direction and they didn't tell us to evacuate. And then the storm moved closer to us and you remember Kathleen, all of a sudden we're here in the house and, uh, and, and we're seeing water rise up around us. We turned on the television 
And, uh, and the weatherman said, this, this, this has risen uh, at, at, at a, in a way we never expected. We didn't think it would, but it did. So uh, take shelter, try to get things up off the floor, do the best you can. And, uh, and he said, it's gonna go on for two or three more hours. So I went out and looked and we were only a foot away from the water out at the front stoop of our house. And at the, what's that? And we live on a canal and on the back side, and we live very close to the harbor here. And on the back side, the water was up to our, our pool, the door on our pool cage. It was right there. And I looked around and he said, two or three hours is gonna keep rising at the pace it's been going. Well, that all happened in just a couple hours. So I thought, man, we're gonna get a lot of water. So I walked out and I looked at all of that and I felt like I needed to pray. And I just said, Lord, I don't know how to pray except to say, if you want us to, to go through a flood, I trust you. I want you to know I trust you. And I will praise you no matter what happens. I had that peace because I said, Lord, because I know you've got it all under control and you already have a plan to use it for the good. And there was just that peace inside. And when we came inside, we started picking everything up, and did the best we could. And I went back out uh, about a half hour later and I recognized that the water was going back. I thought, oh, I gotta be seeing things. So I turned the TV on and I turned it on and there was the weatherman. And he, just as I turned it on, he was saying, Charlotte County, we're getting reports all over the county that the water is receding. He said, I don't understand that. I know I just told you it would go on for two or three hours. All of my instruments, all of my science says it should be going on for two or three more hours, but it's, it's receding. I don't know why. All I can say is it's good news, it's receding. And with that, I just, I just felt like the Lord said, it's over. And I said to Kathleen, let's, let's go to bed. We were tired. We went to bed. I got up the next morning, talked to my neighbor. And you know, Kathleen, he stayed up for that whole time. And he said it only took two hours for it to recede. I just believe that God just had mercy on us. He was just good to us. Now, I, I know a lot of people went through it and we're praying for them that the Lord will help them, help them. But I want you to know that there's a peace available to you. And that peace comes by knowing Jesus Christ, by receiving him, having him in your heart. I'm not talking about having religion. I'm not talking about uh, just having uh, all kinds of religious things and ways of worship, religious things to do and religious ways to meditate. No, I'm talking about having Jesus Christ, the creator, God Almighty, come and live inside of you. And he lives there, praise God, by the Holy Spirit. And we become the temple of the Holy Spirit. And he gives us peace. Now, here's the second one. It's the stepping stone of retention. Retention. You say, what is retention? Well, we know retention. I'll go back to the flood. You know, when there's a flood, they start talking about retention levels. This is retaining water. That's retaining water. And, uh, and so there's retention. But, you know, in school, people talk a lot about retention. There are people who can have attention. That is, they hear it in the moment. But then there's people that have retention. They not only hear it in the moment, but they learn it and it stays with them until they know it and they can apply it. And, and if we're going to have peace, we not only must have reception, but the Bible says we must have retention. Now listen to what it says in Isaiah chapter 26 and verse three. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted in thee. So look what it's saying. It's saying we not only need to know the Lord, 
but we need to listen to the Lord and retain what he's telling us. And if we will retain that, he will give us perfect peace. If we will make what he is saying to us a part of who we are until we act upon that. And that's that's how, we, how we live our life. This word for, uh, for uh, uh, stayed on thee, this word in the Hebrew is uh, yes tesar. And it means inclination, imagination, mind, purpose, framework, a form, a conception. So it's, it's that we hear God's word. We hear the Holy Spirit speaking to us. We learn God's ways. We learn scripture. We learn the truth until it becomes a part of our being. It becomes a part of our framework. It becomes a part of who we are. Um, it means a form or a conception. And, and the origin of the word is, is uh, uh, yatsar, and it means to form or to fashion. And one writer said it means our disposition, that our disposition is, has, has been cultivated and developed and determined by the Lord. We listen to the Lord so much. We spend so much time with him. We spend so much time in his word that, that he begins to take over who we are and what we are. He's our framework. He's our foundation. Jesus said he wanted to be the rock that, and that he would be such a rock that the winds would blow and the rain would come, but we would stand steady and our house wouldn't be blown down. So it's retention, it's really knowing him and retaining him in our mind, our imagination, in our disposition until everything that happens, we meet it with that sense of the reality of that, that relationship that we have with God. If we do that with the Prince of Peace, no matter what happens, we still have peace. No matter what happens, we still have peace. The doctors told me, you got cancer. You're going to die within two years. And I, you say, were you stunned? Yes, I was stunned. But you want to know something? I still had peace because I knew God was going to work it all out. I still had peace because I knew if I did die, I was going to go to heaven and be with Jesus forever and ever and ever. Now, here's stepping stone number three. It's recognition, recognition. You say, well, what do we have to recognize? Well, listen to what the Bible says. Isaiah 26, 12, Lord, thou wilt ordain peace for us, for thou also has wrought all our work in us. Here's, here's how the American Standard Version says that, Jehovah, thou wilt ordain peace for us, for thou hast also wrought all our good works for us. In the NET Bible, it says it this way, O Lord our God, masters other than you have ruled over us. This is actually the next verse 13. But we praise your name alone. So what's this verse saying to us? Well, this verse is saying that God has ordained peace for us and he alone can give it. He puts it in us. He gives us peace. Peace in our circumstances, but peace in our heart. So it's saying here that God uses authorities, teachers, employers, coaches, many things in our lives. But it was God that put them in our life and God was working through them to do something good in us. And, uh, and that he deserves all the glory and praise. So are you thankful today for somebody who made a difference in your life? Be thankful for them. 
But say it this way, Lord, I thank you for that person because I know you put them in my life to develop me, and Lord, I give you all the praise for them. But thank you for that person. We need to always recognize that God is the one who is the giver of all good gifts. There is nobody else that, that gives good gifts except for God. They all come from the Father of Lights, it says in the book of James. And so everything that's good in your life, maybe God has used somebody else to be the vehicle to bless you with it, but it was God who ordained it, that brought that blessing, brought that prosperity, brought that wellness. Maybe God used a doctor to bring healing to your body. Thank God for doctors and, and hospitals and nurses that can tend to us. But let's remember the, who, the, who the ultimate healer is. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. And he sent them and used them to bring healing to you, but he's the healer and he deserves all the glory and all the praise. So if we're going to have peace, we have to recognize that God is our source always. He's the one that gives us peace. He's the one that gives us prosperity. He's the one that gives us wellness. He's the one that gives us a uh, blessing and, and, and gives us serenity. He's the one that does it. And we need him in our lives more than ever. Step number five or four is this, relegation. Isaiah 27 says, or let him take hold of my strength. Now this word strength literally means the fortified place the stronghold, the defense. So it's like you have this fortified city and you say, how am I going to have safety? Because in the word peace is the word safety, remember? That was the first definition of shalom, safety. So how do, you know, if you don't feel safe, you don't have peace, do you? You gotta feel safe to have peace. So how do you have, have that feeling of safety and peace? You look at your, your strongest point, you look at your fortification, you look at your stronghold, and you say, Jesus, I give it to you, take charge of it. Lord, I, 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 I want you to come and have it. I want you to take charge of it. And when Jesus owns your stronghold, believe me, he's gonna make sure that no one messes with it. And he will keep you safe in every circumstance. Oh, I want you to know he is our peace. He is our peace. The Bible says we have peace like a river. We're going to talk about that one of these other nights. So give him control of your strongholds. Trust him to defend you. Let go of your insecurities. As long as you're feeling insecure, that means you're holding on to it and you think it's all about you making it happen. Let it go. Give it to God, release it to Jesus. Trust means to lay it down. I, I love the, the phrase the AA people use. They say, let go and let God. If you're gonna have peace, you gotta let it go. You gotta quit owning it. You gotta give it over to the Lord and say, Lord, I trust you. I give it to you. That's what the word supplicate means. And we'll talk about that another night. So what you hang on to will rob you of your peace. Oh, if this is so important, I've just got to worry all about it and be all upset. I got to figure it all out. No, that's going to rob your peace. What's really important to you, give it to the Lord. Say, Lord, I'm going to trust you to take care of this. I give it to you. Turn it over to Jesus. Give it all, the song said. Give it all. Give it all to Jesus. And that's what we have to do. We have to turn all of those things over to him. Rest in the Lord and he will cause your enemies to be at peace with you. And finally, we have to have the stepping stone of regeneration. Look at this in the, in the book of Isaiah. Verse 15, it says, until at last the spirit is poured out on us from heaven, then the wilderness will become a fertile field, and the fertile field will yield bountiful crops. Justice will rule in the wilderness, 
and righteousness in the fertile field. Now this is a prophecy to Israel, and, uh, and, and it was talking about the, uh, the difficulty, the time of, 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 of loss that they were going to experience because of sin, but he says that's going to go on until the Spirit is poured out. And that will happen at the coming of the Lord. When the Lord comes, Israel will receive Jesus as their Messiah. And the Spirit will be poured out upon them. And when that happens, justice will rule in the wilderness and righteousness in the fertile field. And some people might say, well, that's happening right now. But I want you to know this. I, I pray for that peace to happen and continue, but it's still temporary because there is a tribulation time coming. And we know that in that tribulation time, they're going to say peace and safety, and then sudden destruction will come upon them. And, and, but after all of that, Jesus will return. And when he returns, they'll receive him, and the Spirit will be poured out on them. And it says, verse 17, and this righteousness will bring peace. Well, who is that righteousness? But the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ. He's the righteous one, and he will bring that righteousness, and, and, uh, and it will bring quietness and confidence forever, and my people will live in safety quietly at home. They will be at rest. So at the coming of the Lord, Jesus will, come, will rule over Israel and the entire planet, and we know that the Bible says men will beat their, their swords into plowshares, and men will make war no more. He, the righteous one, Jesus, will bring peace to the earth. And in the same way, when we receive Jesus, the Holy Spirit comes into us and gives us peace. A, a peace that is there forever. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, and peace. So I want to encourage you, if you've never received Jesus, open your heart to him today. Ask him to be your Lord and Savior. Or maybe you've received him a long time ago, but you've been kind of shutting him out. He's still there, but you're not paying attention to him. And you're not listening to him. And you need to say, Lord, I'm sorry that I've been ignoring you, that I haven't been spending time with you, that I haven't been letting you lead me. Forgive me. And, and repent and let the Lord begin to work in your life and you'll have peace. You'll have peace. I want to pray with you. And if you want to receive Jesus just now or you want to repent because you've been neglecting the Lord, neglecting walking with him and following him and want to repent, I just want to pray for you right now. Lord Jesus, I pray for these that may be watching right now who don't know you or may who know, know you, but they, they've been listening to the world and the flesh and the devil instead of you and have lost their peace. God, I just pray that you touch them. Let your spirit come upon them. Help those that don't know you to open their heart right now. And you can do that just by saying, Lord Jesus, I call on you to be my Lord, to be my Savior. I believe you died for my sins. I believe you're risen again. I open my heart to you. I receive you, Lord Jesus. And if you just prayed that prayer and you meant it, I've got good news for you. He said he would come in and he's come in right now. You're gonna to begin to see a difference. Lord, I pray for those that are backslidden. Heal them. Heal them in their hearts and the minds and spirits. And help them, Lord, to fully come back to you like never before. And to be filled with the Spirit. And Lord, we know when we do that, that you give us peace. So let your peace, Lord, throughout this whole holiday season, rule in our hearts. And Lord, let it guide us in our worship so that we can honor you in all that we say and do. Now we thank you for it. We trust you for it. We believe you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. You know, the Bible says all the angels in heaven above rejoice when just one person comes to the Lord.
So let's just praise him for those that are receiving him right now. Lord, we thank you for that. We praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. Well, God is so good. Amen. We're going to close out tonight with a song. And again, the words are on the screen. So if you don't know the words, sing along with us. And just bless the Lord with us here tonight.
tonight, Lord, and afford them your peace through this week in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. God bless you. And if this time has been a blessing to you, please uh, put a like on there. Give us a comment. Let people know uh, that this has been something good. Put it on your timeline and share it with other people. And uh, we just thank the Lord for you. Uh, if you have a prayer request, if you'll just leave it in the comments, we'll pick that up and include it in our prayer time on Tuesday night. And join us again on, on Tuesday night at 630 for prayer. God bless you. Have an awesome week in Jesus.